love the channel and find it useful in becoming a happy retiree. Subscribe today. How can we help, Michael? What's going on? Okay, a couple of things. Uh, first point is that I just heard what you said about investing in 1990, 1998. And the, the, what I'm going to say is relative, and I'll follow it up with, with a question. So that's great because we're in a booming market now. But what if an investor in 1990 was 60, 65 years old and in 08 or 09 needed to cash out? Then that scenario is not so rosy. Okay, so if someone like me who's approaching 60 invests now and 10, 15, 20 years from now, I need to take the money out. And during that window, we're, we're in a massive correction at that point. So what's a good way to protect yourself from that happening? A couple of really important points, and this happened. If you go back to 19, in the late 90s, I remember seeing this happen, happening frequently where folks had expectations that markets would, would first of all, average 15% a year. That, that obviously turned out to be wrong. Everything invested in equities, particularly NASDAQ-oriented, but that was even a worse scenario because the NASDAQ was down closer to 80%, 8 zero. So if you're heavily invested in technology and NASDAQ and you retired, let me tell you something. You, you had to go back to the drawing board. You went. It, you you had to come out of retirement. You had two million dollars. Sounds like a lot. Mostly Nasdaq. It was mostly gone. So you had to totally start over or go back to the drawing board. That's what you have to avoid here. So that's a couple of. And you bring up a really good question, Michael. We call this sequence of return risk. That, yeah, you might average 15% or 10% or 9 8% over m many years, but what happens if in the beginning when you need the money, you head into a major correction? So the, que the, the answer, first of all, here to Michael's or to, um, to this question really goes back to, first of all, just the fundamentals of asset allocation. We're not going to have everything invested in stocks as you, ha as, as you approach retirement. Of course, at, if you are 62 and you're about to retire completely, the last thing you want is a 100% stock portfolio. That is a portfolio that if we go through large corrections, you're going to experience the full downside of the market. If you don't have some protection or counterbalancing that comes with spreading your assets into other areas besides just stocks. Bonds come to mind. REITs come to mind. Energy pipeline companies come to mind. Closed-end funds come to mind. Preferred stocks come to mind. Uh, there, there are a lot of other areas that don't fully take the brunt of the S&P 500. Now, so that's number one. So, of course, you've got to have some sort of protection, balance. We call it asset allocation as you're heading into retirement. Now, number two, you've got to remember, at least I think of this as how what what are we doing from an income perspective so remember when you go into retirement and yes let's say we say we go into a correction you don't need your entire portfolio you only need three or four or five percent of it so as we're doing our planning remember that over time we can have some sort of we, we have we have a, a rate rate of withdrawal it's not a hundred percent of the portfolio you don't need all of it today you need three or 4% or 5% to supplement your social security, to supplement pension. And maybe if we retire really early, we, we're not even at social security yet. Maybe we need a little bit more, but we don't need six or 7% for the rest of our lives. If we do, we're in trouble. That's where this planning comes into effect. And we need to make sure that we're planning to use three, four, five percent 5% of the portfolio in any given year so that we, we understand that, remember, an income portfolio will generate that in any given year, even if the market goes up and down. Even if we go through a correction, your your equities or your bonds should still pay, or your your, your equities should still pay a level a le, level dividends. So dividends should not get changed materially. Your fixed income or your bond portion should continue to pay a similar amount of interest. The 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 we, I call this alternative area. I call it the third bucket or the fourth bucket. Alternative income should continue to pay a similar or level of income. And if you can just rely on that cash flow, then you're less worried about the value of your, the rest of your portfolio fluctuating. So we're living off the income. We're not going in and taking principal. And those are some of the really important things to remember about as you are on the precipice of retirement. You're just about to do it. Yes, we could easily 
experiences volatility, but you've got to remember that both asset allocation and that income perspective can really help you get through that period of time so that you can invest for five and seven and 15 and 17 and 25 years like the study we've been talking about all day says. Hi, I'm Wes Moss, and thanks for taking a minute to hear about what's so different about my new book, You Can Retire Sooner Than You Think. So unlike other retirement books, this book will give you a step-by-step -step guide, whether in your 20s or 30s or 40s or 50s, to learn from what these successful and happy retirees did to get there. I hope you enjoy the book, but more importantly, I know that it'll help you retire sooner than you think.